Choose Your Own Adventure Young Reader Series, number three, Sunken Treasure, by Edward Packard, April 1982. Reckless Read Through. Avast, ye landlubbers, and ahoy, mateys, for our next reading of Sunken Treasure, book number three. Hopefully this time around, we have a ship reckless read through. Page one. Imagine, it's the year 1793. You live in a small house in Boston. From your window, you can look out at the tall ships as they sail in and out of the harbor. Your neighbor, Captain Fry, owns a schooner, the Eagle. His son, Nick, is a friend of yours. You and Nick like to listen to Captain Fry tell stories of the sea of whales and storms and pirates. One day, you find a box full of old letters in the attic. Turn to page two. Page two. Among the letters is a yellowed map that looks like this. Could it be a treasure map? The eagle is due back in port in a few days, says your father. Captain Fry might know something about the map. You decide to ask Captain Fry when he returns, but then you think, why wait? You could walk down to the docks right now and ask one of the sailors. So our choices, folks, is if we wait for Captain Fry, page four, and if we walk down to the docks to find a sailor, page three. Um, well, I think any sailor should know this since it seems like pirate lore, so we'll go ahead and go down to the docks and ask a sailor what he thinks. Page 3. You walk down to the harbor with the map. Dozens of ships are tied up to the docks. You notice a square rigger flying the Spanish flag. On the stern, in gold letters, is its name, Caliban. A young sailor walks by. You hold out your map and ask, Have you ever heard of Tama Island? He studies the map for a moment and shakes his head. I can't read myself, but come aboard the Caliban. Our captain will know. Turn to page 8. Page 8. When you step aboard the ship, you are met by a man with the strangest eyes you've ever seen. One eye is brown, and the other is as red as blood. What brings you on my ship, my young friend? He snatches the map out of your hand before you can answer. Then, with a cruel smile, he says, Take our guest to the forward cabin and lock it. You try to run, but the sailor holds your arms tightly. Don't feel bad, he says. It's an honor to sail with Red Eye the Pirate. Turn to page 20. Page 20. You are held prisoner on the Caliban for three weeks. When you're not up in the crow's nest serving as lookout, you have to scrub the decks and polish the brass. At night, you lie in your tiny berth and wonder if you'll ever see land again. The sailors have told you that Red Eye has been looking for Bluebeard's treasure for a long time and that he plans to use your map to find it. One morning you spot two armed Navy schooners on the horizon. They are flying American flags. Our choices, if we do nothing, page 7, and if we try to get in good with our pirates by warning them about the ships, page 33. So I would say that the most unproductive course of action here is to do nothing at all. Page 7. The Navy ships pass by before you can signal them. They must have been fooled by the Caliban's Spanish flag. That afternoon, you are cleaning the cabin when you hear the pirates shouting. You run up on deck. Standing next to the helmsman, you see Captain Fry's ship, the Eagle, only a few hundred yards away. Man the cannon, yells Red Eye. We'll blow that ship to bits, the lookout yells. There's a reef just off the port bow. Hold this course. There's deep water ahead. The helmsman leans over the rail to look at the reef. If you could grab the wheel from him, you could run the Caliban aground on the reef. And, of course, our choice is if you grab the wheel away from the helmsman, 28. And if you decide not to risk it, turn to page 17. Well, I would say uh, not risking it or risking it. I'll take the risking it option. Page 28. You grab the Caliban's wheel with both hands and swing it to the left with all your might. The ship begins to turn. Crunch! You are thrown as the Caliban crashes into the reef. The ship lurches sharply. Everyone yells. Red Eye goes flying across the deck. The cook pokes his head up through a hatch. The water's pouring in, mateys. We're done for! 
Turn to page 50. Page 50. The caliban is sinking fast. You start climbing the main mast. Suddenly the water stops rising. The ship has hit bottom, but the masts are still sticking out of the water. You are able to crawl up into the crow's nest. From there, you can see that the eagle has anchored nearby. Captain Fry and his first mate, Mr. Pym, are rowing toward you in the whaleboat. In a few minutes, they pull alongside. You let go of the mast and jump into the whaleboat. You've certainly earned your share of the treasure, says Captain Fry. Now all we have to do is find it. The end. So I think the inevitable uh, course of this story was to lead us to this shipwreck being as blatantly reckless and careless as we were. So there you go, guys. There is our first read-through of Sunken Treasure. I appreciate you sticking in there. You know, I burned my bay rum candle in the background to get me in the mood for talking like a pirate. Hope I did it justice. Hey, thanks again, and join us next time for the responsible read-through of The Sunken Treasure. We'll talk to you then.